Hi everyone. Um, in this discussion, we're going to to just to be talking with uh, Drew from Clima, from Climadale, um, and we're going to see how we can how we can bring in Climadale from to kind of provide cross chain solutions. Um, so, Drew, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thank, thanks, Justin. So I'm Drew, I'm leading uh, partnerships at Climadale. I have about eight years of experience in the climate finance space. I've worked with carbon project development and financing. I've also worked with some tech companies uh, doing different uh, innovative things with monitoring, reporting, and verification using different remote sensing technologies. Uh, and I've also just been a, a carbon offset trader in the market, um, along with uh, renewable energy certificates and, and things of that nature. So yeah, excited uh, to, to speak about what Climadao is doing. Um, we've been in the market for about a year and a half now, I suppose. Uh, we're one of the largest holders of carbon liquidity uh, in the blockchain space. There's about 25 million tons of tokenized or digitized carbon offsets that have made their way to the Polygon blockchain. And Climadao is building a variety of different tooling and um, to building a, the infrastructure layer for different applications to tap into that carbon liquidity and build unique applications um, with digital carbon. That's me. Excellent. I appreciate that. So can you can you kind of expand on why you all chose Polygon? Certainly. Um, so one of the uh, key benefits, I think, uh, of blockchain technology in the climate finance space is, is in particular with public blockchains, right? So of course, there's a variety of different public blockchains. Um, but we, we chose Polygon because there is a very, um, let's say, active developer community. Uh, it's an EVM compatible chain, which is a plus. There's a lot of EVM developers already. And uh, it's really important to have, let's say, a very vibrant DeFi community or decentralized finance that can build different types of interoperable applications together. Because I think that, that's how we really spur on innovation in this industry is when people can build together like that. So you want a chain where there's a lot going on there. Um, the other piece is that Polygon, in comparison to other uh, L2s, although Polygon proof of stake is, is technically like a, a side chain. Um, they do have some true L2 solutions in the pipeline. Um, but the, the other condition with them is that they've had tremendous traction when it comes to corporate adoption, right? A lot of that right now is just marketing efforts and doing some interesting things with NFT projects and such. But then it's not so much of a leap for these corporates to say, okay, we're already using Polygon for you know, project XYZ. Let's also start to use them for some of our ESG initiatives and tap into that chain and the infrastructure there uh, for sourcing different types of environmental assets. Excellent, excellent. So, so given that we're trying to, to bring, in, bring in the masses, give, we're trying to bring in enterprises, right? What current, what current challenges do you see um, within the climate, within the climate finance space and adoption? Yeah. So this is a really, really important part um, for what we're trying to do, and that's the interfacing challenge, right? I think decentralized mm -hmm. finance generally really has this challenge with, with the interface. Um, we can't expect corporates and, and really just the majority of users to create, let's say, a Web3 wallet, use MetaMask, you know, mm -hmm. sign into an application, do everything like that. You have to make the experience more, let's say, Web2-like, um, where they're comfortable logging in with an email, you know, maybe using two-factor authentication, being able to see the different types of blockchain-based assets they have, um, be able to send transactions easily and in a verified manner. That, that's, that's really crucial. That's some of the, one of the points that Climadao is working on with our partners. Um, but you know, I think it's kind of like where the internet was at in the 90s, mm -hmm. before web browsers became more intuitive and everything. Um, I think at, in the next year or two, people won't even realize they're interacting with blockchain. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just all going to be abstracted away. That's really the direction we need to go to to get mass adoption. Okay, okay. So, so all right. So once we once we get to once we get to adoption, because I think that you've had the discussion of you know based on the use case, everything doesn't have to be on the blockchain, right? But in terms of in terms of you know carbon offsets, you know, carbon, you know, carbon emissions tracking, what do you think are, are the benefits of utilizing, of utilizing blockchain? 
Yeah, so we, um, I think like Clean the DAO's approach to this isn't uh, unique necessarily. Uh, institutions like the World Bank have cited the benefit of blockchain and mm -hmm. have seen it as a, uh, let's say, an inappropriate technology to apply to the climate science space. Well, why is that? Um, blockchain really provides unprecedented transparency and traceability of different types of assets. And it can be done in a, in, in a way where you have essentially neutral infrastructure that's doing this, that a variety of different stakeholders can both monitor, but then also interact with. So I think this goes back then to this idea of having a vibrant DeFi developer community. If you're all building on, let's say, neutral public infrastructure in a, in a trustless manner, which blockchain provides, people can build different types of applications together and not have to rely on some centralized party to ensure that there's um, you know, congruency with the data and things of that nature. It can all just run on the blockchain. Uh, so I think that's a really strong suit. The other piece is that right now the, the voluntary carbon market is, is very fragmented. There's trading activity that takes place OTC in a very opaque fashion. Uh, and when you can start to move that market activity onto a blockchain, there are interesting data insights that I think can be empowering to the market, which simply aren't really possible today. Today, if you're looking at, let's say, market analysis of the, of the voluntary carbon market, you're relying on retrospective, often survey-based studies. So you're going to be looking at data that's months old, right? In contrast, just to give a very concrete example on this. So Climadot has the, the carbon that Climadot that finance uh, market dashboard. Mm. In, in real time, we can see all the activity taking place from different types of uh, digital carbon instance. So we'll be able to see, you know, what kind of projects are most interesting to corporates, uh, which geographies seem to be, uh, you know, having having high interest on corporates that are looking to offset their carbon and so on. All that data will be available. And I think that's going to be very important. To Excellent. So, so yeah, you were talking about, you were talking about, you know, bringing bringing devs in to 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 your to your ecosystem to your protocol. So my question to you is, how do you how do you recruit and retain devs when there's, frankly, when there's a lot of competition out there across within the Web three space? I'm very interested in in this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so you know, Klima is a, a decentralized autonomous organization or DAO. Um, mm -hmm. It's the first DAO that I've been a part of, but it's really interesting to see how one of the, the, the transparency of like governance decisions, how that happens. And then also through the, the, the tokenomics that different contributors, of course, can have skin in the game right away. Because mm -hmm. if you have the clean token, you can then engage in that governance process. You have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. Major decisions on how funds are allocated and the different types of projects that we undertake. Um, that, that, that's all very transparent. There's a clear governance process, discussions from the community, and then voting to determine that. So it's very uh, meritocratic, I would say, as well. Um, and that's an interesting piece, I think, is uh, attractive to people and to town. The other side is uh, just working in climate finance right now. I think if people are looking for something meaningful where they can have a real impact on it's the future of the planet and society in many ways, and then leverage this new novel technology. Well, we're right at the crossroads of that, right? Clean it out works with the interface of blockchain and climate finance. So I think that's a that's strong messaging is something that resonates with a lot of people. And so we've been fortunate to be able to, to attract a lot of talent that way. Excellent. I like that. So so how long how long do you think it's going to take for to get this DAO type governance type structure for web two, what we call web two companies, mm -hmm. like traditional, traditional organizations, you know, how long, how long do you think it's going to, it's going to take to get the adoption of this type of model? Yeah. I, you know, I, I could see, um, yeah, I think in nine to 12 months, we'll have some more industry players that are a bit more involved, right? We've done a lot of education around what it is that we're actually doing. And this comes back to another point of like, why, why is the DAO structure interesting or why is it interesting to use uh, the blockchain? Um, so we're building these different infrastructure pieces to facilitate the market. And the way that we're doing that, and by building on the blockchain, all these different market participants can have a voice in that, but also have, let's say, ownership over that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. 
right? And that's something that doesn't exist in the traditional market today either, right? It's all, uh, you know, siloed exchanges, centrally controlled, fragmented in a way. We're kind of harmonizing all that. And then everybody can have a voice and can join. Now, of course, that's, that's the thesis that we're after. Will different actors actually want to do that? Because, of course, there's a lot of competition in the market. Uh, we have to see, but the tools that we're building, we try to be neutral and just build a, an infrastructure layer that other people can build on top of. Uh, so we'll have to see how much adoption there is there. The other piece is on the regulation side, let's say. Um, mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wyoming, for example, like does recognize DAOs as a, as a legal uh, entity type. Uh, there's a few other jurisdictions in the world that are starting to do this too. I think that's important for legitimacy and for different players to feel comfortable about it. Yeah. Okay. So you said that you've been you've been educating people, you've been educating people on what you all do, right? Now, are you saying that you've been educating traditional companies on on what you do? Primarily, yeah. I mean, you know, there's so much stuff happening in DeFi, right? And right. what we're doing though has this direct tie into, I don't know if I want to call it like the off-chain world or the real world, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. You know, we we have to onboard these players in the market that have been here for the last 20 years, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to show them how this technology can be used and how it can be empowering to what they're doing. So that is a pretty core mission to what we do. And that's why um, more, most recently we've been hosting this webinar series uh, called Onset. We're trying to get a lot of industry players in there, um, you know, to showcase to them what, what it is that we're doing. And I think the first webinar, it's titled Introduction to Digital Carbon. I think that's a great resource for people in the market uh, to take a look at what we're doing and, and what blockchain can enable. Okay. Now, what's been the, what's been the feedback? What's been the feedback from the from the industry? Like, what have they been saying? Because I'm curious. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, some uh, some organizations are pretty, let's say, they're pretty interested, and they see the potential here. They see how it can. Uh, disintermediate the market to a certain extent and help deliver more finance to the carbon project developers themselves. And through that, local communities that are on the front lines of you know, climate impact. Um, so that's exciting. I think they, they, you know, they see it as a direct route to financing and, and to the demand side participants in the market. There's others that I think see what we're doing as well competition for them. You know, I mentioned mm -hmm. the, the idea of disintermediation. Whenever you do that in the market, people are going to push back because there's middlemen that are taking part of the profit, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, those types of players are, are, are certainly far less receptive to what we're doing. Um, then you have other, there's other groups that they associate anything with blockchain with like, you know, scams and hacks and it's this wild west, right? Yes. That's something yeah. we have to overcome. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And I know, I know that, so are you, do you do anything with, uh, with Toucan protocol? Cause I know that you were actually, you were actually, were, were, were working with that. They're kind of tooling, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So Toucan protocol developed like the, this first carbon bridge it's called. So that basically allows you to digitize the offsets that existed in the, in the Vera carbon registry. Um, mm -hmm. so Vera paused bridging at first while they developed this framework that they feel comfortable with. But in that time, like all the major carbon registries have started working groups and figuring out how can we do this digitization? Uh, mm. Are we going to do it ourselves? Are we going to use a third party? Those are all things that are getting figured out. Uh, and there's other carbon bridges that have emerged in that time too. Uh, Mosser, C3, et cetera. There's a, there's a few players there. Excellent. Excellent. So if, so if an organization, this last question, if, if an organization is looking to enter into this space, you know, what would be the, what would be the implementation path? What would be the uh, 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 digital transformation journey you think for a web two company moving into web three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll answer that through the lens of, um, like a, a, a carbon project developer mm -hmm. to, to provide context. So, you know, right now um, they may partner with different organizations that are going to buy their credits and then find end buyers. Um, they may do forward deals or just swap deals, et cetera. Uh, but what this project developer can do now is that they can directly link into the market and see what their types of credits are trading at, that the pricing is available 24 seven, 
you know, fully transparently on the blockchain. So they can have a choice of let's say just selling their credits directly in the market after they bring them on chain. Um, or they could load them into a marketplace uh, and you know sell them for fixed pricing to different participants. Uh, they could integrate them into some of the other web three tooling that does like automated offsetting for different fintech solutions and such. Um, the big thing for them as part of the journey is they need to connect the carbon registry account with the blockchain. And that's getting more streamlined nowadays. Um, again, a lot of this is going to get abstracted away. You're not going to have to worry about MetaMask. You're just going to have one account, um, you know, with the carbon registry or with another custodian that'll manage all that for them. Uh, and then it's just going to be like they had any other account online. You're just going to click a few buttons, move some credits around. They're not going to worry about any blockchain stuff. It'll all be, you know, in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know I said that was the last question, but I lied. So, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this will be the last one, but so what, like, what's your thoughts in terms of, in terms of interoperability within, within this climate finance space? Yeah. So this is, uh, this is an important one. Um, mm. I spoke to a, a gentleman from a BXC. So they are a group under the, uh, what is it? The Global Blockchain Business, Business Council, GBDC. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, they are looking at what kind of working groups they can have here. And one of them that I'm really pushing for is the development of an, uh, an open digital carbon data standard. Now, what does that mean? Mm. It means that we have the data framework in place for how carbon offsets are stored on a blockchain. It also means that we start to standardize the processes at the smart contract level on, um, I don't know if you're familiar with like carbon retirements. That means when you actually claim the environmental benefit yeah. and then that credits taken out of the market. Um, so all these different processes need to be standardized. And uh, this BXC group, uh, their infrastructure working groups are looking at this and they're you know a neutral body. They're, they're working and funded by multiple layer one blockchains. And uh, they're also working with the carbon registries themselves. So this is exciting because of course, this type of uh, standardization is really important in the market. If we have you know all the innovation happening across these different blockchains and so on, being able to uh, compound, let's say. Right, and then what's the name of that group again? Uh, so it's BXC and I'm trying to think, it's like blockchain climate something and then BXCI is the blockchain climate infrastructure working group. Um, those organizations are underneath the Global Blockchain Business Council. Okay, Global GBDC. Blockchain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blockchain Business Council. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's pretty much everything, everything that, that, that I had. So do you have kind of any, any, any parting words, uh, where, where can people find you and, you know, what do you, what, 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 what final takeaways or calls to action would you have? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I would just say, um, look, this is a really exciting space. I think blockchain technology is starting to mature. Um, the interfaces are getting better. Uh, there's just so much innovation happening. And I think climate finance itself is also a, a growing field. It, it's mm -hmm. tremendously growing. Good 30X by 2030. That's just uh, carbon offsets in the voluntary carbon market. Uh, and so, you know, if you are, let's say, a developer or just someone working in climate finance and you're interested in what's going on here, check out climate.finance. We have a great resources section. We've written extensively on all the topics that I've talked about in this discussion. Uh, and you can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Drew underscore Klima. Uh, I post a lot about you know, the different developments in this space, as well as uh, the carbon offsetting market more generally. And yeah, be happy to engage in the discussion. And also if you're a company, happy to help you source and utilize digital carbon assets in the future. All right, excellent. Drew, thank you for your time. And until next time, thanks a thanks, lot. Justin. Thanks. Yeah.